and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, the son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. 
and, and he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. I have read Mark 10, 46 through 52. May the Lord have a hearing and a blessing to these words. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for waking us up this morning. We owe you a word of praise, Lord. Lord, thank you for creating this day, a day that we've never seen before and a day that we'll never see again. Lord, thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you for forgiving us. Lord, forgive us for our sins. Forgive us the things that we thought, said, or did that we're not, that we're not glorifying to you, Lord. Lord, we pray for our, our bereaved families. We pray for those that have lost loved ones. We pray for those that are sick and shut in. We pray for those on live stream that weren't able to be here. We pray for our New Hope family. Father, most we pray, we pray for our pastor, the leader of this church, and his helpmate. Lord, continue to bless him and keep him and use him in a mighty way. Father, we love you. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We hope today's service is a blessing to someone here today, in person or in live stream. Again, we love you. We thank you for Jesus, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. this time we're going to give way for the offering at this time you can give through Giblify or on our website at nhbc-seaside.com or post office box 834 Seaside California 93955 this time we're going to have Reverend Kidd come and pray God's blessing on offering followed by our altar prayer for Reverend Boone Heavenly Father, I stand before you, Lord, giving thanks for the monies that you have given us. And we feel, Father, that it is within our spirit, Lord, that we give back a portion that you have given us. And we pray, Father, that the monies given back to you, Father, be used in a way that will uplift your kingdom in heaven and on earth. We further pray, Father, for those who wanted to give but weren't able to give, Father. We pray, Father, for those that only had a penny compared to those who had a hundred pennies to give, Father. We pray, Lord, that, that you bless those the same way you bless the rich and the poor, Father. We ask these things in the matchless name of, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, Father God, the one who sits high and looks low, Father. Father, you seem fit again to wake us up to a new day, your day, Father. Father, you seem fit to bring us once again to your house of worship. 
Father, it was those that didn't wake up this morning. Father, it was those that didn't want to come this morning. But Father, we know that all things come through you, Father. Father, we, we love and we need you and we give you honor, praise, and glory, Father. We thank you for the blessings that we receive each and every moment, Father, each and every day, each and every minute. We thank you for our church home. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for the air that we breathe, Father. We thank you for the health that we have, Father, the roof over our head, Father, the food on our table, Father, the, the beds that we sleep in, Father, the cars that we drive, the monies that we have, Father. We thank you. We give you honor, praise, and glory because we know all things come through you, Father. Father God, we ask that you continue to bless those, oh, Father, behind prison walls, sick and shut in, bereaved families. Bless those with ailments, Father, in their body today. Father, we know that you can heal. Father, we know that you can provide. Father, we know that you can give us breath. We know, Father, that all things come through you. Father, we love and we need you right now and we can't do without you. Oh, Father, and as we go into this portion of the service, Father, we ask that you bless the one who's given the word today, Father. Oh, bless him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Father. Continue to anoint him and give him true honor and glory, Father. Because we love him as we love you, Father. Father, we, we bless your holy name, Father. We know that without you, there is no us. Father, we know that without you, there is no breath. Father, we know without you, there is no healing. Father, we know without you, there is no praise. Father, you are our everything. And we give you honor, praise, and glory. Oh, we thank you. We thank you, Father. Oh, Father, continue to bless as only you can. Bless this service, Father. Let's lift your name up on high. Oh, Father, there are some that are at home watching on live stream. Bless them, Father. Touch them as only you can, Father. Oh, Father, we love and we need you right now and we can't do without you. There are so many things on our heart, Father, but we know you are the healer. Father, we know that you're the problem solver. Father, we know that there's anything that's wrong that we can't solve. Father, you will do it. Oh, Father, you did it for those in Israel in their time. And we know that you'll do it for us in our time, Father. Father, we love and we need you right now. Oh, Father, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for this moment, Father. Uh, Father, may this moment be a blessed moment only, only in you, Father, because we're here today to live, give you honor, praise, and glory and lift your name up on high. And we thank you, Father. We thank you. In the mighty, holy, and immaculate name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
opened.
I've been set free. Yeah. Savior, the Christ, whose name is Jesus. Thank you for saving us through him and by him. Thank you for sealing us in our salvation by the power of your Holy Spirit. You might say we've been healed and sealed. Because the Lord looked beyond our fault and saw our need. Thank you for your holy word. Touch your preacher from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Give me power to preach. Forgive our sins. And see our sin no more. As your word is declared, to be any that don't know you in the pardon of their sin, someone would come crying, what must I do to be saved? Have your way. In the matchless, marvelous name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. From the gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter, verses 51 and 52, I, I, I want to... Um, there's so many that stand in the need of prayer. I certainly can't call them all or remember them all, but I, I do want to call out uh, Laura Smith. Laura Smith had surgery, and so we want to keep her in prayer. Mother Banks fell, ended up having to get eight staples in her head, but she says she's doing fine. <laughs> Let's keep her in prayer. And we want to pray for uh, Brother Banks. Uh, his sister passed. In fact, she had 
come to visit us a couple of times. We want to keep the Baines family in prayer. There are so many who have lost loved ones, uh, the Rice family and so on. Uh, keep them all in prayer. How many know that we all stand in the need of prayer? Yeah. From Mark uh, chapter 10, verse 51 and 52, uh, we find these words. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will you that I should do unto you? What would you have me to do for you? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus. And followed Jesus. And followed Jesus in the way. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. You may be seated in the sanctuary. Happy birthday to Dee Dee Smith. Amen. Our theme for this morning's message is the Lord is a healer. The Lord is a healer. I have a sub-theme as well. Are you healed? Are you healed? Our theme today is a declarative statement that is based on a fundamental factual truth. Our sub-theme is a very important question that you better know the answer to before you breathe your last breath. God says about himself in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals you. The Bible tells us that God is a healer. Everybody that has ever lived has been healed by God at some time or another. If you have had a common cold and got over it, that was God healing you. If you bruised your toe on furniture and it swelled up and turned purple, but it got better, that was God healing you. If you had the worst day in your entire life, full of heartache and sorrow and distress, but you woke up the next morning and you are still clothed in your right mind, that was God healing you. If the next day was worse than the day before, that's because you don't realize that God is healing you. With every breath we take, that's God healing us. And the problem is that many people don't give God the credit for the constant healing he is doing in our lives on a daily basis. But that don't change the fact that God is healing us and that God is a healer. Usually when people are in need of a healing, it's because they are dealing with some type of physical, mental, or emotional issue that affects the person's health and quality of life. But there is no issue in any person's life in more need of a healing than that of a sin-sick soul. What compounds the dysfunction and corruption of a sin-sick soul is to be spiritually blind and not know that you are in the midst of a healing. There are few things more disheartening than to learn you've been afflicted with an incurable, inoperable, irreversible, terminal condition, and you realize that there's nothing you can do about it in your power. Well, that's the condition of a sin-sick soul unless we, re we receive the spiritual and eternal healing that only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. In our text today, it tells us of a blind man that actually saw his need for spiritual healing even through his lost blind condition. Background of our text tells us in Mark chapter 10, verse 46, that Jesus and his disciples are passing through the city of Jericho, and a great crowd of people are following Jesus. 
Jesus is making his way to Jerusalem, for he has a date with the cross. And as he is passing through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus has a pre-planned appointment with a blind man named, Nick, named Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus is sitting by the side of the road, begging, not knowing that he has this appointment. Verse 7 says that when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, you son of David, have mercy on me. Mark 10, 48 says that many in the crowd that followed Jesus rebuked Bartimaeus and told him to be quiet and don't bother Jesus. It's interesting, though, that blind Bartimaeus sees that Jesus the Christ, is the Christ of God and he is passing by, but this crowd who can physically see don't even recognize who is walking with them. They don't recognize it because if they really knew who they were following, they would have never told Bartimaeus to shut up. The scriptures say even though they tried to shut him up, he shouted even louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. <laughs> Bartimaeus, he asked Jesus for mercy, admitting it, that it is in his inability to help himself and to heal himself. But by asking Jesus for mercy, Bartimaeus submits himself under the lordship of Jesus. Should not a day go by that we don't ask the Lord to have mercy on us. Am I talking to anybody in here? I, let me say it again. Should not a day go by that we don't ask the Lord to have mercy on us. And the reason so many people can't get help or get healed is because they refuse to submit themselves under the lordship of Jesus. Bitterness, anger, anxiety, hatred, unforgiveness, sinfulness can all be healed under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Do I have a witness in here? Bartimaeus, he admits that he has an issue and he cannot fix it. But he has heard that Jesus is passing by. Now note that Jesus didn't call Bartimaeus' name, but Bartimaeus called out Jesus' name. Don't miss this. Jesus knew exactly where Bartimaeus was and who Bartimaeus was. In fact, it was Jesus who set up this appointment. And yet he did not call Bartimaeus' name. He waited for Bartimaeus to call out his name. Listen, if you really want mercy, let me talk to some real folk in here. If you really want mercy, you will call on the name of Jesus. If you really want to be healed, you have to call on the name of Jesus. If you really want to be saved, you have to call on the name of Jesus. Am I talking to anybody in here? In, in humble submission, blind Bartimaeus says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus responds in the 51st verse of our text, he says, it says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will you that I should do unto you? In other words, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Understand now, Bartimaeus, he approaches Jesus the right way. He first says, Jesus, have mercy on me. He humbles himself before Jesus, before he asked Jesus for anything. You see, we come to Jesus, and sometimes we come any kind of way. But you can't come to Jesus any kind of way. And the problem is that too often people come to Jesus the wrong way, and they, or they don't come at all. Too often people want the benefits of Jesus, but they don't really want Jesus. But in our text, Bartimaeus calls on Jesus yes, with humble submission yes, because he wants Jesus' help and he wants Jesus' healing. Yes, Let me say it again. Yes, Blind Bartimaeus asked Jesus for mercy before he asked him for his eyesight. eyesight. Let me say it again. Blind Bartimaeus asked Jesus for mercy before he asked for his eyesight. Let me say it again. 
blind Bartimaeus asked Jesus for mercy, forgiveness for mercy, before he asked Jesus for his eyesight. We have to know how to approach Jesus. Then in our last verse, Mark 10, 52, it says, And Jesus said unto him, Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Please don't miss this. Please don't miss this. It was not just that Bartimaeus called Jesus' name that made him whole. A whole lot of folk call his name, but they ain't doing it with the right heart. It's not that just his calling his name made him whole. It was Bartimaeus' humbleness and faithfulness calling Jesus' name that made him whole. The Greek word for whole is the word sozo, spelled S-O-Z-O. And sozo means to save. It means to deliver or to protect. It means to heal, to preserve. It means to keep safe. Jesus says, your faith has kept you safe. Your faith has saved you. Your faith has preserved you. Y'all don't hear me. Your faith has made you whole. This is the same thing Jesus says when he healed the woman with the issue of blood. Your faith has made you whole. Not only did Jesus heal Bartimaeus' eyesight, but more importantly, he healed Bartimaeus' soul. The text says, Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. We don't know how long Bartimaeus was blind. The text doesn't tell us how long he was blind. It suggests that he had been blind a while, may have been blind since his birth. But we don't know how long he was blind. But now, Bartimaeus can see. Let me say it again. Some folk may have been raised in hell all their life, but if you call on Jesus, he'll take you right now from where you are right now and open up your blinded eyes. We don't know how long he was blind, but now he can see. The songwriter said, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I, this is personal. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I don't know how long he was blind, but now he can see. The text says, after Bar Bartimaeus got his eyes healed and his soul saved, he followed Jesus. He became a disciple of Christ. The question is, are you healed? <laughs> whether you be in the sanctuary or whether you be on live stream, the question is, are you healed? Bartimaeus' faith made him whole. Bartimaeus' faith made him healed. And he decided to follow Jesus. Note that when he was blind, that when Jesus had them bring him to him, it says that he got up and went to Jesus. While he was still blind, he got up and went to Jesus. If you really want to get to Jesus, if you really want to get to Jesus, how many know that you can get to Jesus? But now he can see. He can see and he becomes a disciple of Christ. Can you imagine that he sees Jesus? He's been blind for however long. And now he's healed and he sees Jesus. Wouldn't you want to follow the one? Am I talking to anybody in here? Wouldn't you want to follow the one that changed your life around, that made you whole, that turned your life all the way from down to up? Wouldn't you want to follow him? He became a disciple of Christ. You didn't have to look for him in the worship service. He got up as close as he could in the service. You didn't have to look for him to go and, 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 and tell someone about Jesus. Can you imagine 
that as he's following Jesus and as Jesus is making his way to Jerusalem, that everybody he sees, do you know what the Lord has done for me? I once was blind, but now... Gets healed. And instead of going back home, he follows Jesus. He sees the one that brought him out of darkness into his marvelous light. He sees the one that opened his blinded eyes. He sees the one that turned his life around. Wouldn't you not want to follow that Jesus? And the question is. Are you healed? Are you healed? Should no one have to tell you if you're healed or not? You ought to know if you're healed or not. How many know you healed in here today? In Isaiah 53, verse 5. Yeah. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. I got a news flash for you. God is a healer. But sometimes he does not always heal us physically. I have seen the Lord take someone who was in the best of health, the best of health, and got sick down to 95 pounds. And I saw the Lord take that same sick person, turn them around, and put them back on their feet. Came into church praising God. I've seen folk in the best of health and get sick and go down to 95 pounds. And we prayed over them, and they still died. But that person I'm talking about, they died in the Lord. <laughs> By his stripes, we are healed. First Peter 2.24 says, who his own self bear our sin in his body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. God is a healer. Jesus is a healer. And the question is whether you be in the sanctuary or on live stream, are you healed? If you want to be healed, you got to call on his name. Yes, <laughs> it's as simple and easy as the ABCs. Yes, you have to humbly yes. admit you are a sinner. Right. Faithfully believe that Jesus is the only remedy for sin. Yes, and sincerely confess that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Yes, and you shall be saved. Yes, the question is, are you healed? I just need a full few folk in here. And, and I understand that all of us is going through something. All of us are going through health issues. All of, of us are going through emotional and mental issues. We've been through a pandemic that has distressed us and depressed us. And yet God kept us. <laughs> But all of us is going through something that affects us in our mind and in our body. But with all that being said, if you know you have been eternally healed, give God a praise. Been through the storm and the rain, but he kept us been through ups and downs, but he kept us. Been through this, that, and the other, but he kept us. You ought to give God just one more, 
Now do it because you know what he's done for you, not because I said it. The Lord is, the Lord is a healer. I love you, Jesus. I worship him. If I bother you a little bit, y'all don't mind if I bother you a little bit. Do you remember those times when you were going through something, whether it was in your health or in relationship or in whatever it was, when you were going through something and you didn't feel like you were going to make it through? And, and, and as I, I look around the church, I know for a fact that the folk I'm looking at at some time or another been through something like that. But can I say this? Do you know why you don't look like what you've been through? Do you know why you don't look like what you've been through? It's because God is a healer. And he had a personal healing for every last one of us. And how many know God ain't through with you yet? You ought to give God one more or two more or three more praise offerings.
Once again, that invitation is offered. If you don't know Christ in the part of your sin, come to Jesus that you might be healed, that you might be saved. At this time, we're going to prepare our hearts and minds for our communion. Um, Reverend Welch is going to come and read our scripture, and we will move forward. Scripture, 1 Corinthians, 11th chapter, verses 23 through 26. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Reverend Trope was coming at the prayer at this time. Father, as we prepare our hearts to receive communion, Father God. Let us think about all that you did upon that cross, the time that you took with the disciples of Father God, the time that you took, Lord God, that didn't have to be taken out. But Father God, you served with a purpose, and that purpose, Lord God, we thank you for. Father, we thank you for your body that was the bread, Lord God. We thank you for the drink. That was the blood that was shed for us, God. We thank you, Father God, for all that you have done for us. And Lord, we continue to stay mindful of everything that you do for us. And Lord, let us take this drink and take this bread, Father God, in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Why? 
gets away every, every, every one of my tears. I know it's the blood and it gives me strength, gives me strength from day to day. our soul. Let us eat the bread and let us drink the drink. Let the church say amen. amen. At this time we're going to have, ask if you would all stand for our benediction. Thank God for all of you who are here with us in the sanctuary and to all you who and visit us on live stream. Once again, we offer that invitation that if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you shall be saved. You shall be healed spiritually and eternally. Father in heaven, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard and what our souls have felt in this place today. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for all those who are here and those who are watching us on live stream. Thank you for reminding us, Father, that you are a healer. Amen. We pray, Father, if there be any that don't know you in the part of their sin, that they would come crying, what must they do to be saved? And we who know you, Father, will do your will your way, that we'll go and tell a dying world about a Savior who can save unto eternal life. We bless your name, Father, in the matchless and marvelous name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen. amen. A reminder, uh, follow directions of the ushers as they direct us out. And now I want to him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power henceforth and forevermore. And they all sang together.
God bless you and God keep you.